All right, let's start this with a warning. If you're tired of me <laughs> trying to explain about how amplifiers double their wattage into lower impedance loads, then you ought to click this off and go watch something else. Watch another episode, watch something else because you're gonna hate this. I'm going over it again. This is the 50th time I've gone over it. But you know, here's the thing. I really enjoy making these things and trying to help people understand. And once in a while, I know that I can break through the, the knowledge barrier that stands between us. And it just, if I keep attacking it from different angles, light bulbs start going off in people's heads. Now, if the light bulb's already gone off in your head, then you don't need to watch this, and it's okay. This isn't for you. So, instead of writing me nasty comments, like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> don't watch it, please. All right, we're gonna go through it again. Cause I, this young man, I don't know if he's young, this man, David, in London, kind of gave me a good insight into how people are kind of misunderstanding what's going on. So I'm going to try one more time. All right, so David writes to me and he says, all right, I find it confusing that a speaker with low impedance can require more power from an amp. Now my brain thinks, but surely low resistance is easier for the amp to drive. Makes sense, right? Resistance is something that takes power to push against. So lower, less resistance, that should be less power. And yet it isn't, it's exactly the opposite. So David continues, how about this for an explanation? Imagine you have a mouthful of water and you're blowing that water into um, a tube. And the diameter of the tube is one inch, but at the other side of the tube, the exit diameter is tiny, say a quarter of an inch. So now you have high resistance. That one inch tube, you're blowing the water through a narrowing diameter of the tube, you're gonna have more resistance. Now you'd easily be able to make the water come out in a nice strong jet stream, and it would come out with power. Now let's say magically I snap my fingers and the exit hole of the tube suddenly opens to an inch. Therefore, you have much less resistance than before when it was tiny the water would rush out very easily from your mouth and would exit the tube with less strength instead of traveling, say, one meter. It would come out a far less distance uh, with less power. Does, it doesn't make sense to me how lower resistance can t mean more wattage, not less. And I agree with you. And here's the problem. We're not looking at the issue properly, okay? When we talk about lower resistance, we don't mean lower resistance between the amplifier and the speaker. There's nothing standing in the way of this resistance you're referring to. It isn't like I've got high resistance which should take a lot of power to get through the resistance that we're talking about is between the output of the amplifier and ground. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, think about it this way. Let's say this is a battery. What the hell is it anyway? Jur <laughs> Jurgens Ultra Healing, there you go. Okay. <laughs> and this battery has a plus terminal up here and a minus terminal down here, right? And if we string a light bulb between here we're going to draw energy from, it actually goes from the minus to the plus, but, but that's okay. From the plus to the minus, and the light bulb's going to light. We're drawing energy out of this thing. But what happens if you take a wire and tie the positive terminal directly up to the negative terminal? You know what happens? Well, if the battery's big enough, like a car battery, it'll explode. So don't do it. If it's a small battery, it'll get really hot and kill the battery. That's called a short circuit. We're shorting out, we're, we're providing the least amount of resistance. So the most amount of resistance is not connecting it at all, right? 
you have high resistance between the plus and the minus. The only path, the only conductivity path is the air. And uh, that actually can conduct a little bit if the voltage is high enough. Then we add a wire. Now that's low resistance, but it's between the two terminals. So now think about this plus terminal as the output of your power amplifier. And over here is our speaker. And here is where the energy is finally going, that we're, we have a path, right? And in that path is the speaker. So as this path gets smaller and smaller, lower and lower resistance, it's going to draw more energy out of our battery, i.e. our amplifier, and take more wattage to make this thing work. And the worst case, if you take the output of your amplifier and you like you know the red terminal on it and you take a wire and you plug it directly into the black terminal I don't recommend it but if you do that you're going to short the amplifier out and it won't be able to produce any voltage or wattage at the output because it's taking everything it has putting it back into the negative terminal we're shorting that battery out Does that make sense this is where the low resistance is so the higher the resistance between draining this amplifier or the battery, the less wattage it takes. And the lower the resistance in this direction, the more it takes. So hope that helps. The last thing, if that makes sense, okay. So the last thing, probably should use this, dry hands and all, uh, I will mention is about voltage. When we look at a speaker we are presenting a voltage to that speaker. So we have an 8 ohm speaker. We're going to present, say, 10 volts of music, right? Going from plus to minus, plus to minus, and there's 10 volts across that. That voltage is used to push the driver back and forth. As the plus goes up, the driver pushes out, right? As the the plus goes down, it comes back. As it goes to negative, it pulls back in, and we get this motion, right? That's how this is working. And that voltage is what's pushing that driver back and forth. Now, in the example I just gave you, if you take that same 10 volts from your power amplifier and you make the resistance to ground, and that, remember the example? When you make that resistance to ground less, like 4 ohms, this voltage is going to get dragged down, right? Just like, remember, let's say we have a 10-volt battery. 10 volts up here, zero over here. You put a meter between the two, you got 10 volts. If you start reducing the impedance, drawing more current out of here, this 10 volts up here at some point is going to start dropping down. 3 volts, 2 volts, zero. That's when the battery shorted. So as the impedance of the speaker goes down, it becomes increasingly more difficult to keep that 10 volts up. And to do that, we need, you got it, more watts, more current. And that's what keeps our 10 volts going up and down. So hopefully the light bulb has gone off for a few of you. Thanks for your patience. Okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.